Hey, we're going to talk about Kripa a little bit more here. And uh, if you saw our review of the book last week, we talked a lot about Kripa's rhythmical uh, use of interlocking panels and things like that. And I think what we're going to try right here is abstracting that out a little bit and uh, talk about the page design and uh, sort of steal from him a little bit in terms of the page as unit. And um, I'm, I've got uh, my little crepa cheat sheet out here uh, using a single page. And uh, so it looked like most of the pages, Carson, that you were, oh, is this going to work? Right, it's not letting you draw anymore? There we go. I, I can draw now. OK, uh, cool. It, it looked to me like most of the pages that uh, we were discussing this with, the rhythmical division of the page um, had a sort of base four as a starting point. Yeah, and somewhere the, in it, but he, he tends to also extend. Right. So, OK, I'm just going to go with the one I remember. OK. And we could try this in different ways, but he'll create like. I'm going to make a blue guide for myself here. Go ahead. He'll create like this base four, yeah, but then like he'll do something that extends it right you know pieces like that so that base always seems upset a little bit somehow and to be clear what i'm talking about when i say base four is that um the starting point imaginary or otherwise i'm just drawing it in blue here so you can kind of see what i'm talking about is uh taking the page and dividing it out into a sort of grid of four uh, and that doesn't mean that he's that's happening all all the time, but that that's sort of the undergirding structure. Imagine it, you know, by And this is a musical. Yeah, I don't necessarily think he's doing that. I think he's kind of just like boom, 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 and he has a good sense of it. But Sean's taking and Sean's a musician, and I used to play drums, so we're taking that idea of musical subdivision and applying it. Right, we have one mm -hmm. unit, and we're we're dividing it into three. And normally in music, you have like the bar and the bar is divided into fours and you would count one, two, three, well, sorry, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or the other typical subdivisions, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, and you, you, that's just normally how you hear it. Music lately, even in stuff like rap is getting more experimental, whether do things like what Crepa is doing where you'll have one instrument playing in four and another instrument's playing that subdivision in three and you'll get a kind of interesting this is uh, polyryth polyrhythms mm -hmm. is what it's called or polymeters depending on how people are applying it basically how long this distance is um, and it gives it like a more hiccupy vibe to the music right. um, it's like It has that like scattered feeling to it. And Crepa has that in his his pages a lot. I wish I had, I should have pulled up like Meshuga or somebody that does these crazy polyrhythms <laughs> in their music. Um, uh, so Sean, you're going with a four, a four, four subdivision. I'll go with like, I'll, I'll subdivide on threes. Sounds good. And uh, so I'm just using this as sort of my baseline here. So I've got four divisions and then I've taken these larger panels and divided them up that way and then um, I, I'm going to sort of keep this in mind as I'm going actually let me go ahead and make a you know another internal division here and um, and this is pretty classical like composition stuff too mm -hmm. like where people are using I call them armature oh Jesus that eraser erases it doesn't just erase wherever you're at. Okay, <laughs> lesson learned. We're trying out a function on on Zoom, by the way, that's called whiteboard. Uh, so we're learning a new tool here as we're going. Does that let me draw? All right, um, pretty cool feature. I should probably use this as a art instructor who's teaching online. <laughs> 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 Haven't used this yet. Uh, but th these are I call them compositional armatures, too. So you get a lot of stuff like this, like uh, th this structure here of threes you get in photography and stuff. Rule of thirds um, is a typical compositional armature. 
where you would say, okay, you, you divide the paper into thirds up and up and down. Um, and then you'd pick one of these four points and that would be like the focal point for the composition, you know, so maybe you would have like a character standing here and their heads there, and then you would have a shoreline. And that's said to le like lead to inevitably interesting and beautiful uh, compositions or like golden ratios, golden spirals. There's these standard compositional armatures. Um, other people like Andrew Loomis get more, he has a really weird system where he like subdivides and then has like a way that he subdivides and he creates these more complex things. Um, so that that's the basic idea here, I think, of what we're doing. And then we're trying to stick with something that has to do with numerical ratio is that right that's that's what i'm thinking yeah um and and uh you know basically i i've started with what i would consider to be you know a large panel at the top here as you know you could think about this as an establishing but since we don't have any content it doesn't really matter right but i'm already sort of thinking narratively and then um this this sort of inward spiral as something that we saw on a few of these abstracted pages and it's something that's a lot more possible when you have images that are unconnected or or loosely connected to each other because the if someone reads in a different order it's not really necessarily as critical it's not like you've they've made an error um uh so a big chunk like that leading into this section here and this almost makes me feel like i should pull up and that's where that Scott McCloud like aspect to aspect transition that he talks about in understanding comics comes into play because the the scene is almost frozen in time um, or like with the sex scenes, you know, it's it's just you understand they're having sex. You don't need to see each in and out in order. <laughs> <laughs> right. The sequence so, is not quite as important. <laughs> yeah, I like that mashup of, you know, Scott McCloud has these six very strict categories, I think and understanding comics and that that's one of them um is the aspect aspect i like that Craypaw's mixing up what scott mcleod would call moment to moment with the mm -hmm. aspect to aspect and that creates that dreamy sense it's like time is passing but it's in a kind of mixed up frozen order uh, as and, well. and that's that's a similar trick to the abstraction thing we were talking about before um in terms of the 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 uh, zoom in technique where all of a sudden you've taken a familiar object you've already depicted and you know split it out yeah so i'm going to do something like that where he very intentionally like this is the total unit that this is cutting into four right but then it's like disrupted in the middle so that suggests that this is maybe well Okay, so I'm gonna, well, I'll keep playing. I have an idea for this though. I'm gonna internally divide this at that same distance. Okay. And then whatever I draw in there, I'm gonna try. So this overall is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, and then it, it happens to line. I, I don't know if I did this with the ruler that it would line up like that, but on my sketch, it happens to line up here. So I'm gonna try and put like he would like a bed frame or something that lines up with that um so i've got a seven against four ratio basically happening there and i have no idea if he's this mathematical about it i get a sense that his stuff's like pretty intuitive but he does seem to really enjoy jazz as well so who knows what are some of the are you you're just like freestyling more or do you have some intentional well yeah i mean uh that's what i was doing at first and i was really happy with the top half of the page and then um i seem to have just split it in half like they don't interact they're not interacting uh the tiers are not interacting with each other so i think i need to split out some of this and but he might do that um like like this you know like basically like coming through you know playing across the bars basically yeah yeah because otherwise same thing with like something like this i mean i could 
bring that across and then it, it it's not so having a gutter all the way across the page is like a barrier you know but he will do that and then in those cases that's where he might like i'm gonna draw on top of sean's thing now yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the fun part of this can i get oh yeah i can get a little thicker like he might carry across like there might be a straight gutter across uh... the page. Um, or he would run like this gutter into the image in the panel, which is what right. I'm going to try and do here. I guess I should still be drawing in blue. Oh, well. I'll do the rest of it in blue. So I'm going to keep the top not across the bar like that, and then I'll try and do what you're doing at the bottom. Uh, we should try and fill in each other's compositions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know. You so what? What about having something big and chunky like like this all the way? Across? Yeah, I feel like there might be a big one there. I almost feel like if we got a song, like we could compose <laughs> around a song. Oh, here I'll split the page in half. And so this is like now a two against all of those threes. Okay. So this is this is fitting into the three, but it's right. splitting the page in half. Um, and then we'll have like this little piece go. Yeah. Go down. Oh, mom came home, so the dogs are going crazy. And that's nice because then I can split these in half, basically. Okay. With like that. But I feel like then he would probably turn those into two because this needs to be balanced out over here by a long one. Mm -hmm. Oh, so maybe this would go like, let's get really, there you he, go. Does a, he does a <laughs> lot of panels. You need a lot more accenty notes. Yeah, that seems better. Yeah, it does. And then put one little accenty guy down here. I don't know. I don't know why he wouldn't do a panel like this. I can't think of any L-shaped panels, but whatever. Um, and then this could break into, let's break this into three. And, and keep could, that, and then stretch that out into a longer note. Right, or, or you could finish with some legato um, and have, you know, Yeah, we'll put that at the bottom. I want to disrupt this because we're staggering it. So, yeah, he would do maybe something like this. Oh, no, let's. It's such a weird thing. I'm trying to compose like someone else. Yeah. And then maybe a long and a short. And then, yeah, boom. And I would not be surprised if something like that really would be the origin of a page like this. Um, you know, he's like, okay, so I'm starting with, you know, this is the this is the riding crop scene. So here's my my sexy wench <laughs> and her, you know, sweater and. You know, I only have one other beat here that I have to hit with a big picture. Let's just say that it's a window and a bird is chirping, coming in the window. <laughs> um, and, and those might be the two dominant things. And then all these other things are, you know, the action that's already been planned. But then you can kind of allow the, the other individual actions to be subservient to their overall vision. Yeah, and you can placement. fill them in later. Right. Yeah, so as you're as you're playing that balancing game of spotting the blacks and stuff, it's like, oh, I need a Valentina head over here because right. I need that black. Yeah, that's smart. That makes sense. Okay, so which on... you know, if if uh, for the Cerebus fans out there, um, it was always perplexing to me uh, when I you know Dave, you know he worked he did six thousand pages. He did every potential way you could do something like that. But one of the things that he did for the majority of the time is do no layouts. He would have an idea of what was going to happen. 
And the first thing that he would do was rule up the page and uh, put in all the boxes. Um, and uh, you can imagine that happening with your process if you're sort of picturing the goal of the page as being the primary thing. Uh, yeah, well, and Dave's obviously got what we keep calling pre-visualization skills. Right. And yeah, he has, I think Dave always had a very clear, yeah, like this issue has to achieve right. this and this uh, page. Yeah, that makes sense. Some of his plotting stuff is basically like a laundry list. Like I've got to hit this and I've got to hit this and I've got to hit this. Um, I, I can imagine a page like this because of how much it is, you know, like basically the point of it is the art. You can see that he might just have a sort of narrative goal for his page. Okay, she's going to, you know, look at the ceiling and masturbate. Yeah, which is a lot of the stories. <laughs> right. Yeah, so for your page. So I would think then for my page, like this would be this would be the most important thing. Right. So we'll just have some, yeah, a girl getting spanked. <laughs> uh, you know what? No, let's go more. Let's go weird. So I want to then, the other thing I think, and I want to overdo it maybe, is play with his, like this would be then, the piece that would come down into the frame here right. so it would subdivide this on that and then um and it's kind of a rule of thirds thing going on here a little bit so we'll have that and then we'll have uh the dark feet there but then we'll have her tied up like this is like a bondage situation by the way we're not making this up whole cloth this is literally from the uh <laughs> books that we've been <laughs> Yes. Yeah, this is, yeah, by the way, this is not my preferences. This is, uh, we're thinking this way because this is, yeah, thank you, Sean. The content of the book. This is not because I want to do bondage. Um, although, if you're into contour lines, I could see why people would get into bondage because of the way the ropes <laughs> press into the body just make all kinds of yeah. contour. Absolutely. So, uh, I could see I could see as a pen and ink artist, I've thought about that before too. Like, man, I kind of just wanted to, like, I'm not even interested in bondage, but just from a purely aesthetic standpoint as someone who loves line, could be interesting. Yeah, if you're a sculptor, if you're Brunelleschi and you're the greatest uh, sculptor in marble who's ever existed, uh, you know, if you're gonna you're gonna make a sculpture of the rape of Lucretia because it gives you an opportunity to grab somebody, have somebody grasping uh, marble ass flesh yeah like how the yeah just the 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 dent that's made when flesh is pushed right yeah that dent right there similar thing when like a rope wraps around something um the way that the the contour of wrapping i don't know, yeah like the the rope pushing the flesh out of the way yeah totally okay uh so you got a girl getting spanked over here oh you <laughs> you've got that is she gonna have the secondary character there right exactly yep Put a secondary character on mine. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make this a uh, much more dramatic uh, compositionally. This is kind of fun. We can just go back and forth. Oh, you're putting like a strong foreground in there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then here we can we can give it some kind of uh, maybe this is the you know posterior over here <laughs> as a <laughs> through line to the riding crop. Yep, we need a crop in there somewhere. This could be, I'm gonna offset like this line here with like a more tall vertical character. Okay. And she could have the crop. So we'll just put like a triangular composition there. She'd be in the dress, but there's the crop. So once you've got it going here, you know that that's the other thing is that so then you know do you carry you carry it over across like this some type of really weird shadow on the wall or something like that you know it, there's once you start per perceiving pages as going across the gutters like that it seems like there's an awful lot of opportunities for that 
Yeah, for sure. Oh, and here I wanted to I wanted to put there's a bed here. So that bed frame lines up with those panel gutters. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to mine and I'm gonna put some Russ Meyer springs straight up through the springs. Well, and you uh here you could have like an opportunity for you know a post of some sort coming down. Mm -hmm. Or and even the riding crop itself, like this could be right there, like the little dangly bits. Oh, and they, they could be a whole like wall of devices, handcuffs. Because that's another thing I really like about him is he'll he'll focus on objects a lot too. Right. Um, um, so I, I've I've taken um, something that I saw in a couple of his stories, which is having. Um, uh, there's got to be a word for this particular thing, but having an object or a scene that travels across gutters. Here we split it up with the objects, which actually that suggests to me that maybe the objects themselves should have close-ups in the other page panels that are surrounding it. Like uh, one of them would be a handcuff. Exactly. And one of them would be just the right, well, we need a longer one. So you'd have to subdivide this and then just have the writing crop. That's good. So then, then we've another, got another one panel over here. So like here, we've got uh, an, you know, an angled, I've drawn some crude uh, perspective of the underside of the bed with the springs. And then we've got a, a continuation of it in the, in the one over here. I saw a couple instances of that before. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's something when I first started talking to Brandon Graham, I, I joked with him about, um, he had he had done a piece in one of the image plus books i think he he did like these little bits about comics on the front page of one of them one of them was all about how much he liked tangents and i i like damned him for uh putting that out there because i'm always telling my students you know don't draw tangents right uh, you know don't don't have two things that um, appear to share an edge basically um but what, what i think what he was pointing out at there is what you're talking about is or like this you have these interpanel tangents right. and in his newest book by the way i just got that rain like hammers he did this same thing very purposely and it leads from one panel to another like mm -hmm. i could do it here i could have this bed frame here as well so let's do that uh, but i'm going to make this one bigger so i've zoomed in here's this bed frame uh, I guess I would have to make the bar a little bit bigger to make that work, but you'll see how this creates an implied line through here uh, that unites those three things, but it, it disrupts the reason you normally don't do tangents is it disrupts the sense of overlap and thus the sense of space or you right. get misperceptions, but that would be a cool trick there. This like leads through. And then maybe if I really want this to line up, but I need it to be bigger so it looks closer, then I could just keep this and do like the shadow. The shadow has the same width. Okay. You know, maybe that's how okay. I solve that problem. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, so I, I've thrown in Louise Brooks here. Yeah. <laughs> close up of the lips, close up of the eye with a single tear. <laughs> Well, um, we need some of those, um, the dots, like the right. hair dots. And here's the bird that's peeping in at her. Like you definitely need a, um, I feel like it's gotta be over here. The round head there well, on this one, it's gotta go off. Like the round head. I, well, I wanna do it just the hair. <laughs> because to me that's what really matters in those is the sing-songy nature of the hair dots yeah he's got he'll, he'll he'll draw the back of her head sometimes too so it's literally just like this note on the page he's got quite a collection of uh, graphic devices at yeah it's, it's really impressive I got to figure out what's going on with that bed. Uh, this is her hanging from the other angle. Maybe there's just a foot here. Oh, yeah. The amount of 
shoes depicted. And you set up here, you set up like this line here. We're right. talking about that too. Yeah. Really intentionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you was... have this nice, um, like, edit. so this is something else that could be cool. Like these X's could create armatures that you're composing on. Right. So like whatever, what's this right here? Uh, that was the, the bird emerging from the window. Oh, uh, okay. So the bird's wings could fit on the X. Right. But push yeah. them up. Oh, that's nice. You know. So you're like subdividing the panel. Mm -hmm. But keep like the top of the bird wing so it doesn't look so centered. There we go. Up here, but then the tail is on. The on X. diagonal. That's yeah. excellent. Well, uh, that was a fairly fruitful. Yeah, I think like we don't need to finish these. I think yeah. this is a pretty good. Who knows if this is his working style? I I am convinced by your idea that he had key panels, right? Of the action, and then he could let himself just wander in these. That's really mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, and and you know you think about um, uh, playing like a solo or something like that. You might have a motif that you're planning on hitting or. Uh, a certain section of it that you always do the exact same way and then you have these other parts where you're sort of bridging those those two portions together um same thing with starting a drawing even of observational drawing you know you've got this period of intense work where you're trying to capture a certain thing and then you have this other part that's essentially like a pleasurable sensation of following the form of the thing that you've already laid down uh i think that you know, I, I just have to think that he's working graphically as much as he is storytelling wise, you know. Um, and, and that's that, where you get the surrealism from. And I think that allowed him probably to stay in. It just looks like he had fun doing this and right. he had fun doing this for years on end and never got bored of it. Right. And I think it's probably because he had a system in place that allowed himself to surprise himself. Yeah. Um, at some point, I think you would be like, well, I'm probably going to draw a spanked ass and get a little bored of it. But I think compositionally, yeah, he has that. It's jazz. And one of the stories um, in volume five is about a jazz player and he references a lot of jazz musicians. So I think he is bringing that improv and jazz does that, too. Right. You have the grid. Right. Of the rhythm. And then you're going to improvise over the, the structure. So right. I think and that can, improvisation on a structure um, and, makes and a lot of sense. That doesn't mean that you hit the grid every time, um, you know, but everything is sort of around it. You know, you, you're pushing and pulling against it. Um, and uh, well, in moments like this, that's why I put that in there, because he does that, too. Or these little offsets that he'll put in there. That's like a swung beat. You're just right. hitting a little bit you're supposed to play the note here but you play it there just to make it a little funky mm -hmm. um yeah so i under i understood the musicality of his pages already but i really after doing this understand the jazz improvisational quality of it a lot more and um yeah this was really cool to me. Was so that, I'm glad we did this because I think I think we need to do some more of this where we're not always focusing on surface so much because mm -hmm. um, I think both of us what we love about comics is so deep at all levels it is the surface level it is the production level stuff but it, it's also the formal levels and the potentials and the medium and how it can cross over with other modalities of art like music and things like that and steel and, and swap. Um, and I think that's really important for, for people to understand when they're looking at comics, right. like seeing all these different aspects of it and how that contributes to the story. So this was awesome. Well, maybe we'll try this again. Let us know in the comments. Uh, yeah. Let us know what you enjoy about the channel and uh, things you'd like to see more of and things you'd like to see less of. And uh, you know, uh, and if you'd like to see less of something in particular, uh don't tell us <laughs> no t tell us because then we can we can re reappropriate that time for better, <laughs> better uh, absolutely you guys have a good uh, one thanks thanks for uh 
drawing along. Yeah, we need an outro for the drawing ones. We'll have to get one of the one of the partners to do the guys. Are you done yet? Come out. It's time for dinner. Walk the dog. Speaking of which, I should go. So thank all you right. all for viewing. Thanks, Sean. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.